Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and if you didn't know, it was Asteroid Day on Tuesday, so I'm currently following up with the Asteroid Day mod that I kind of encouraged the Kerbal developers to put together. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, starting out, this is the Pro Hex 2 probe core, which is essentially supposed to be similar to the bus of the Sentinel spacecraft. It's essentially a 1.25 meter probe core with uh, a lot of SES capabilities and a ton of electric charge which you can use for your science experiments. The science experiment that is supposed to be mated with this is the Sentinel Robotic uh, Infrared Telescope. It has a new science experiment which you can use and it also has a whole function to find asteroids using its infrared capabilities. If you don't know, asteroids are actually very black and they tend to absorb optical light, you know, light in the optical range and then re-emit it as infrared. So having a telescope that can see in infrared is quite a good idea for if you're wanting to look for asteroids. The uh, third item is the high gain antenna which folds away here and of course you can extend it. It's always nice to have animated parts. I really quite like these things. Uh, I think it's be the best antenna available in the game now. And finally we have on page two here the, we have the little OX stat photovoltaic panels. Now these are the XL versions, which are basically eight times the size. And for this, they're really supposed to go here, because that's where the solar panels are on the uh, Sentinel spacecraft. And unfortunately, you get to cover up the Sentinel flag here. You can also, alternatively, you can pick the B612 flag, which is included in the pack, just in case you didn't know. B612 is of course named after the asteroid in the book Le Petit Prince. It's the, there's an asteroid in which the little prince lives on. And uh, there is actually a real asteroid, B, B612, which uh, is by terrible French pronunciation. They, there's obviously an asteroid 612, but that has some other name. Asteroid... Oh god, I can't remember. Somebody went and called it B612 in French, which uh, is kind of cute. So anyway, the plan for this, if you're going to match the real mission, is you want to put it between uh, Kerbin and Eve. In the real world, it'll be sitting just down about the orbit of Venus, because down there it will be able to look up towards the Earth's orbit and see asteroids which normally spend a bit of time in the Earth's orbit, but frequently spend a lot of time interior to the Earth's orbit. Okay, so I'm going to put a little uh, fuel tank on this. We'll send that out for your know, rendezvous with whatever. And, well, truthfully, this thing is actually kind of bulky, and I find, I think I find that you're going to probably use a 2.5 meter rocket. Now, just for comparison, the real Sentinel spacecraft is a lot bigger than this. It's actually about the size, I've heard it described as being about the size of a FedEx delivery truck. And the payload, they will also have room, apparently, for another spacecraft. The idea is it's going to fly down past Venus, get a gravity assist there, and put it into a target orbit, which will uh, allow it to perform its mission. But the second payload, well, it can do whatever it's like. They can send something like one ton, I think, based upon the current provisioning. So they could send that down there, and if you wanted an interplanetary probe, you can get a gravity assist from Venus to basically anywhere in the solar system. It's like, if you can get to Venus, you can get to anywhere through the magic of gravity assists. Okay, so to launch this, well, because the spacecraft is so light compared to the real thing, the it's actually really, really, really easy to launch. I think a single jumbo tank and a skipper will probably get me not up, not just up to orbital velocity. Uh, actually, yeah, that'll get me 6.3. So that'll get me up to orbital velocity, possibly most of the way to escape velocity, and then sufficiently fast that I can actually perform my um, circularization. I'm not going to perform a a gravity assist with Eve. That's that'll be left to people that actually have time to figure these things out. Uh, mostly, I'm just doing this video live, and I don't want to have to time accelerate to get the correct configuration. There we go. We'll put four of these on the bottom because the whole thing will probably need a little bit of stability control. But that is that is my version of Sentinel. I think they're originally planning to launch it on a Falcon spacecraft, which I believe may be actually a donation since B612 are non-profit, but uh, yeah, let's let's send this out and see what happens. Sentinel. Uh, 
yes, I'm going to overwrite it because this is a better one. Whatever it is, I've probably obliterated a perfectly good spacecraft here. Okay, so first thing we need to do, make sure, yes, it is morning, so we're just going to launch. We're going to go eastwards and head out there, which will slow our orbit down. And we, that means that we will be going backwards, which means we'll be going slower than the planet Kerbin, which means we will fall down and hopefully into an orbit just above Kerbin's. I'm not really sure, but we'll go for it nevertheless. Now, the other thing we need to do is, yeah, we're all, in, all set. Set this up. They're all to 100%. And once we pick up a little bit of speed, I'm just going to knock it over just a touch and then hopefully the turn of the the gravity turn will just carry me over into a, an ascent trajectory here I think I think I'm gonna let this go over just a bit more this is always hard like early on the or the the gravity turn is an incredibly sensitive maneuver right if you it's like it's one of these it's incredibly sensitive to initial conditions and if you Begin your gravity turn too fast, you can very quickly find yourself breaking up or even falling back towards the ground and then breaking up. I mean, ultimately you break up if you hit the ground, but it's also, it's more spectacular sometimes to break up because you exceed aerodynamic limits. This needs to flatten out its trajectory more. I'm just trying to get this down so that it actually is using the maximum amount of its fuel to get itself into a suitable orbit here. There we go. Ten kilometers or uh, ten kilometers up and moving at just over Mach two. I think this is a pretty good exit scenario. Obviously, this is nothing like the actual launch, which would be on top of a Falcon, uh, a Falcon which presumably wouldn't explode because that will be a launch anomaly, which will be fixed. We will not expect many more in the way of exploding rockets after <laughs> after that one. Okay, 21 kilometers, and I think we're doing pretty well here. I think we are doing pretty good. Now, I'm just realizing... Okay, so we're just going to head out that way. And I'm just going to keep the orbit getting flatter and flatter here, right? We want to make sure... Oof, look at that! It's like a sprint rocket there. <laughs> this is what happens when you have to... Uh, when you basically have a planet that is... For, for gameplay reasons, you have to have pretty lethal re-entry heat at about 2 kilometers per second, so... Uh, Kerbal Space Program isn't really that accurate on this point of view. However, in Kerbal Space Program 1.04, they did redo the thermal models, and there's now a, an interior versus an exterior of parts, so the outside of a, the skin of a part will get heated differently from the interior and they will communicate heat back and forth. Similarly, rockets will get hot on the inside and then the heat will uh, propagate inwards. Oh, and I've actually overcooked this a bit. I wanted to go just inside Kerbin's orbit here. So you can really only scan one planetary orbit. You have to be aligned with the planet and uh, in this case I want to scan Kerbin because otherwise I'd have to make, let me see, set as target, I'd have to make a, an inclination. I actually, you know, maybe I should just do that. Maybe I'll go interior to Eve. Why not? Let's, let's, everyone else is scanning Kerbin, but maybe we are concerned about asteroids hitting Eve. So I'm just going to throttle this up, burn out the rest of my fuel. I'm sure it's going to come out soon. Oh, there, liquid fuel is about to go down to zero. Bingo. Okay. So we need to... Put an, do an orbital insertion and then a, an adjustment to our inclination here. But before we do that, we need to deploy the spacecraft. We need to bring that out and we need to turn it so that the solar panels are, are able to sustain themselves through the power of the sun. Oh, look at the pieces of the fairing flyway. Isn't that beautiful? I always love fairing separation in Kerbal Space Program. It's really quite, quite beautiful. Let's uh, deploy this antenna as well. Now you can't do the science experiment just yet. You have to get into deep space. So let's do that. Into deep space. And again, before we go anywhere, we need to align our solar panels. We're just going to escape. Say farewell to the Kerbal system, or Kerbin system. Now, we're going to orbit the sun. And we need to get into our position to actually um, to perform the maneuver. So a word of advice here, you can you want to make sure these solar panels which I have 
are facing the sun. And we're going to move around the sun. So I suggest you point your spacecraft so the camera is facing along the orbit, like back towards where Kerbin is roughly, right? And then as we move around, the sun will move around this side and eventually end up illuminating this on the other side. If you do it the other way, you can find yourself with some serious issues. Uh, we could make the maneuver, you know, maybe we should make our our uh, inclination correction here. Let's actually do that. So let's add a maneuver to fix our orbit here. We want to observe Eve for no other reason than we can. This is the ascending node, which means you need to correct it by performing a descending burn. You see that? I'm not sure what the inclination limits are, but I suspect that will be fine. Okay, so down to point 0.3 and then we'll perform our actual insertion burn to bring ourselves inside of that orbit. Align with the maneuver node. Oh, wait a second. Will the maneuver node be keep us sustained? Be careful following the navigation computer. Sometimes it does not understand its relationship to the sun. It understands its gravitational relationship. It just doesn't understand its power sharing relationship. Okay. So we're just going to fire that up. And actually, I need to actually fire the engines. There we go. So look at that. It's going to reduce our inclination changes. And hopefully, once this is all burned out, follow that node, sir. Follow that maneuver. Follow that maneuver. Okay, that's us. Now, set our things point retrograde. Actually, set ourselves for stability control. Kill this maneuver. And once again, align it with the poles and point along there to make sure that we are okay once we get around the other side of the orbit. I'm going to warp here. Um, actually there, that's where we're going to warp. Warp to there. See the way the sun is moving? Continuing to illuminate these solar panels. Everything is working as I had planned. Planning is good. Planning is what keeps space missions alive. Forgetting to plan frequently leads to unplanned events. <laughs> And unplanned events are not the kind of things you want happening when you have one chance to get everything correct. Okay, that's us down here. And at this point, actually, I wonder if I can perform uh, log observation data. So that's observation data, etc. And you can start object tracking, but it says misaligned with Kerbin because we're not aligned with Kerbin. But if we, that's because our high, they're talking about the highest point of our orbit. But if I rotate this now, fire our engines, hopefully it will start to realize that we're actually more interested in EVE. Uh, let's stop object tracking, start object tracking. Oh, it still says misaligned with Kerbin. Gotta get the thing entirely inside EVE's orbit, I suspect, before... Ah, there, now we go misaligned with EVE. Let's see if that fixes itself before I run out of fuel. I'm just watching my Apple app's height as well. Well, now, once it gets below the orbit of Eve, perhaps there's a chance that we will see some real science. Obviously, you're supposed to do this with a, a gravity assist. That's how you would do it in real life, because in real life, we have mathematicians that are actually really good and dedicated to making sure that they get all the data we need. Okay, there we go. Inside the orbit yet? Are we... We're mapping Eve! Look at that! Isn't that amazing? We are actually now telling the world about all the dangers that are posed by asteroids near Eve. I'm going to shut off my engines now. And move ourselves back into this polar orbit. Hold on. There we go. Or not polar orbit, into this polar aligned configuration. Again, making sure that we get just enough power to continue our mission. So it's going to start mapping everything and watch this. As time runs forward, we should start to see asteroids. Bingo, look, we're getting these asteroids near Eve. They're kind of high inclination. I think these are quite, I don't know, these would be a real challenge to actually rendezvous with, I have to say. <laughs> In reality, the way the game should work, I'd say for future reference, if this was ever in stock, I would say that the game should return high eccentricity, high inclination objects in between like 
uh, Duna and Dres or whatever, you know, large objects. And then when you launch the space telescope, you start getting the smaller ones on much easier to get to orbits. That would be my suggestion, but currently this is a mod. I'm not sure it will make it into the, the core game, but it would be really cool if it did. So yeah, that is the Asteroid Day B612 Sentinel Telescope mod. In honor of Asteroid Day, remember, if you are interested in saving the world from killer asteroids, we have a whole Asteroid Day declaration that we are encouraging people to sign. I'm a signatory, you should absolutely sign it too. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.